We're standing here today in one of the most sacred sites in Somerset, the Cider World, in the shadow of Glastonbury. I'm standing with Frank Nash, who's Britain's oldest cider. Yeah, the oldest working one. <laughs> he reckons he's been making cider in this barn as his father and his grandfather before him for the last 80 years. He represents a tradition which is part of the Somerset culture. There are hundreds of small cider makers in the county. The government is at the moment got plans for the unit of alcohol pricing. This would effectively mean a 100% increase to the price of Frank's cider. And I think we can honestly say that a 100% increase would mean that the traditional cider market would end. The traditional cider drinkers, a 100% increase would be something they couldn't cope with. The person was trying to make these laws, did he know what he's talking about? Minimum pricing would mean that four litres of cider, this much cider, which is currently 580, would be over £11.60 which would mean that most of my regular customers would find it too expensive. It's not going to affect the price of a pint in a pub, but it's going to affect traditional sales. Well, you can't expect people to go and pay nearly £12 a gallon, not for a gallon of cider. It's absolutely ridiculous. It's going to double in price. Who's going to well, buy it? They, they won't buy it. They'd be too dear for them, would it? They'd pay better and buy some whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> These orchards contain more than 40 varieties of vintage cider apples. Some of them are very old and very rare. Their long-term future will be put at risk if these uh, regulations go through as outlined. We've got dozens of different varieties. Uh, Crimson Canes, um, Yarnington Mills, Sister Paul. <laughs> We've got Foxwell, Glastonbury Greens, Glastonbury Port Wines. You've got like oh, a be port wine, yeah. Bonus Normans. Well, there's going to be loads of the orchards in the local community around here that's going to be grubbed out again because people won't be able to sell their apples and they're not going to grow apples and just leave them there to rot. Once the apple trees are grubbed out, they are been gone for life, really. All the wildlife and everything's gone. To the part of the countryside apple trees. The small cider makers are not part of the alcohol abuse problem which happens in the cities. But for us to be forced to double the price, which would end our existence, when at the moment we are the greenest of green products. In Frank's case, he grows the apples. They travel possibly 200 yards to his cider mill. People come to the farm more often than not with their own containers to fill up with cider. Uh, so the carbon footprint is very small. To be forced off the market in favour of other forms of alcohol would be a shame. We're not looking to change David Cameron's policy, but we are looking for an exemption for small cider makers selling on the farm direct from the barrel.